the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated, please. Long time ago, I heard um, of someone, a preacher, he was an Episcopal priest from the Deep South. He says, the problem with the Episcopalians is they cannot hear the good news. He says, and that's because they don't hear the bad news. And the bad news is that you can't do it all by yourself. Well, there is some truth in that. But I would say this, you know, in defense of Episcopalians, I don't think we're the only ones that miss out on not hearing the truth or not hearing the good news because we don't want to think about the bad news. Too many of us, whatever our uh, church we come from or no church at all, we sometimes tend to think we can solve all our problems, we can do it all by ourselves. And when we think that, when we're drawn to that kind of attitude, um, it's hard to hear what the good news has to say that we can't do it because we don't understand it. You can't do it by yourself. Let me just take one sort of, a couple big kind of examples from history. Um, from the time of the Second World War, which ended the year I was born, okay? From that time, the world tried to create a, peace, a peaceful environment, at least in Europe, because you understand that Europe has always had a very violent history. There's always been constant warfare in and out of good times, bad times, always warfare all through its long history. And after the Second World War and all that disaster, uh, it, was it was, people said, we're going to try to do something better. We're going to build a better world. We had the UN. We had all sorts of things that were going to work for peace. And yeah, we had the Russians and the Soviet Union, you know, trying to, they, they half the, of Europe, they kind of had control over. But even then, even though we sort of glowered at each other across the Iron Curtain, uh, we kept peace. There, was, there weren't any real major wars in Europe for a long time. We did it for, well, as long as I've been around. And then, last year, what happened? War in Europe with an invasion in Ukraine. It didn't work. It didn't last. We couldn't quite do it the way we'd hoped to do it. And not to mention the fact that there were wars everywhere else in the world in other different places all through that period while Europe remained in relative peace and, and, and calm. And then there's another example that comes to us. You know, in the, in the years that after we uh, elected uh, President Obama as president, I had nice, you know, very nice uh, white liberal friends who would come up to me and say, well, now you see, we have a black president, so racism is over. And now I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to quote Sarah Palin, who said, and how's that working for you? Seriously, racism's not over. We thought, we thought with a couple civil rights acts, maybe we sort of made things better, but it didn't quite work. And I'm going to suggest to you that if we stop to think about most of our good intentions that we do in this world, we set out to live in our lives, personal lives, family lives, neighborhood and community lives, we set out with good intentions to do good things, and we come to a point where they just don't work. We can't seem to follow it through. And this is what I think that um, Southern priest meant when he said, you know, we don't, we don't get it. We, don't, we can't hear the bad news where we, we, you know, we can't solve our problems. We can't do it alone. Our faith tells us, our faith, well, I was going to say, just as, as, as proof of it, uh, this is now the end of January. And how many of you have made New Year's resolutions? I mean, this is, I know it's almost like a standard joke, but how many have made New Year's resolutions and broken them already? This is just what we do. It's just part of our human nature. We can't always, we can't ever seem to get it entirely right. But the good news, the good news is that our God has come into the midst of human life. I mean, the very heart of the gospel it was always the point of the scriptures that the God who made us cares about us, loves us, is involved with us, uh, and wants, to, wants us to be involved in, in, in his life. And in the la these last days, as we say often in our, in our worship, in these last days, the word became flesh and dwelt among us when Jesus came and shows us in flesh and blood what God is like and how God wants to be involved in our life. 
And the thing that we should learn, and don't seem to always get the message clearly, but it seems to me that we should learn that one thing God is not is like a fairy godmother who comes along when we have a problem and waves a magic wand and it all goes away. That's never the way it's worked. Our God has showed us this continually throughout, throughout the whole of the history that's recorded in, in the scriptures, our, you know, the relationship of people with, with their, the living God, and certainly has showed us this in Jesus, in whom we see in, in human form the very essence of what God is like. And what we see is Jesus it did not come to solve all our human problems. He sh came to show us the presence of God, to, to affirm for us the, the, the presence of God in our lives and the, and the fact that we're loved by God. But he himself did what he followed, what the prophet said. You know, he, w w this is what we should do as faithful people, to do, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. And all those things, Jesus showed us how that works. And what we also see in the life of Jesus is, well, it didn't exactly bring him fame and glory in the way that we might expect or hope for in our own lives sometimes when we think we ought to, you know, when we do something, we want to be given an award or cheered. And that's not the way it always works. Sometimes, all too frequently, unfortunately, when you speak and live the truth, people find it upsetting. And Jesus teaching of the truth, Jesus living of the truth, they found upsetting to a very serious degree where he ended up on the cross, which looked like a foolish way to live. St. Paul, meditating on the cross, says, you know, we, the, the foolish, God chose what looks foolish in this world to shame the, the wise. God chose what looks weak in this world to shame those who, send, who feel that they're strong. That this is the way God works. It's not the way you and I think. But there's something about that walking, doing justice and, and loving kindness and walking humbly with God that may not always bring us fame and fortune, but it brings us something more, something more profound, which is the heart of the good news. It puts us in the place where God is. In the Gospel reading this morning, we heard um, what, if, if you went to Sunday school, you would have heard them probably called the Beatitudes, because every, every sentence begins, blessed are those, blessed are those, and um, we, you know, blessed are, the, are those who, who's, who know their need of God, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who show mercy, because they, you know, and blessed are those who are peacemakers, and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That blessed in Greek, the word makarios uh, means, well, well, blessed is the way it's usually translated, but so what does that mean? And what it means, what, uh, one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of it is someone saying that it, it really means to be, it has that sense of being in the presence of God. You're in the right place. You're standing in the right place because you're standing in a place where God himself is. Think of it that way, just I found it very useful to think of it that way when you say, blessed are those who know their need of God. Those who know their need of God are standing in the right place in the presence of the living God. Those who are meek are in the right place because they're in the presence of the living God. Those who work, hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who work for peace, they're standing, we're standing in the right place, in the presence of the living God. And that is the heart of the good news, that when we stand, when we live by doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God, we're standing in the right place. We're where God is. And that makes all the difference, because success or failure by human standards don't mean very much. By human standards, we could say, and people have said, they said it at the time and they still say it in, in many ways, that Jesus was a failure. He ended up on a cross as a common criminal, a disgrace. But we know the end of the story because that did not keep him, that did not hold him. And the God we believe in is stronger than death itself. And the love of God that comes to us is stronger than anything, any power, principality, or anything else in, in life. Even death itself cannot separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And that is the heart of the good news. 
Now we need to set out and live as, you know, we're, we're admonished to live by the, by the prophets by the, and by, the, the, by all of the teaching of Jesus and the church. We live as people who love kindness, who do justice, who walk humbly with God. And we do it not thinking that we're always going to win the battle in one sense, in the world sense, but we know that we have a wisdom that's stronger than human wisdom. We know we have a power that's greater than human power. And we know that to be blessed, we need to be standing in the right place, standing in the place where God himself is, where he calls us to. And this is the heart of the good news. It means, first of all, I guess, as the, as the preacher said, coming to the conclusion that, you know, the bad news is we're not going to do this on our own. But the good news is we don't have to because our God is with us. And even in the midst of failure, even in the midst of, well, mourning and hardship, persecution, it's the right place to be if it's for the right reason. And God is with us in that moment, in that place. We're standing in the right place. So, do justice. Love kindness. Walk humbly because we're in the right place when we do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.